Hey, hey, how's it going? This is Nathan here. You like to roll the bastards? Now, here's a look at the dustbin. One thing I did notice that, yes, the robot does pick up a lot of dirt and debris, even on its low power setting. I did do a full uh, run on this through, during my house, and notice that down there. See that kind of like a uh, gold disc there? Yeah, that's the dirt bin sensor. Basically, you can detect if there's dirt going in the bin. Okay, upon the teardown, I did confirm that there's no dirt detection sensor. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove the battery cover. Battery, it looks like it's a 3000 milliamp hour and it's rated at 2900 milliamp hours. Next, we're going to move the extractor housing and extractor bar. So I would say that the extractor bar does good with pet hair. Next, we're going to go ahead and move the left and right wheels. It's held on by about four torque style screws. And if you like this type of teardown video, please smash the like button. Helps me gauge if these types of videos are popular or not. Thank you. So like with most common robot vacuums these days, they have a spring that helps them transition over different types of terrain, carpet, thresholds, and you can see that it's adjustable. Very nice setup. Okay, so I'm going to take out the pin, which you can punch out with the hammer, and next we're going to separate the two assemblies, and I'll reveal the gearbox for you guys. Okay, here's a look at the gearbox. You can see there's a bunch of gears in there, and it's greased up. Very nice. Looks like they did a decent job with the gearbox. Okay, here's the most challenging part of the build. I went ahead and removed the two side brushes, and now I got like 10 or so screws. There's actually one that was hidden underneath the extractor bar. I didn't find it for about 5 or 10 minutes, so I kept pulling on it, and I had to get a flashlight to see if I was missing any screws. But with any teardown, it's always the hardest to do it the first time around. But once you realize where all the screws are at, it's not too bad. So as you can see, I was just yanking on it, trying to get the screws to come apart, but no luck. Okay, I think I got all the screws. Let's see uh, what's inside. Alright, so you may notice some beads. Yes, I did a bead challenge and unfortunately the robot wasn't very well sealed. So you can see all the dirt and de debris that got inside. Next, we're going to remove all the connectors from the circuit board and remove all the screws. There's actually a plastic base plate I have to remove as well. I'll give you guys an up close of the circuit board. And you can see in the middle there, that black dot, that's the 3D camera system. So if you're new to my channel, welcome, my name's Nathan. I do a lot of cool things with robot vacuums. I do reviews, unboxings, overviews, and you can see I do teardowns as well. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to take apart is the side brush motor. There's actually two of them on this robot vacuum. Some robot vacuums only have one, some have two, and there's actually a couple of vacuums I own that don't have any, kind of like the LG Cord Zero R9. It's kind of surprising that they wouldn't include a side brush, but I'm glad that the Shark IQ did include a side brush actually two of them so good job shark iq for having this okay it looks like that came out pretty easily it looks like the gearbox is held on by a couple clips i'm gonna go ahead and get a flathead and remove the housing okay so here's a quick look at the gearbox pretty simple design but it's very efficient i do like that the shark iq has a single arm design so it doesn't spread around the debris Okay, so the last thing we're going to take apart is the vacuum motor. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove the housing, but it's pretty simple to remove just a few screws. As you can see that the motor is very compact, it's actually underneath the circuit board, and you'll see the impeller and everything. It's actually a really high airflow at like 23 CFM. So most robot vacuums these days run around about 7 CFM up to about 24 CFM, like the Osmo 950. It's one of the highest airflow robot vacuums, but keep in mind airflow is not everything. It also has to do with the smartness of the robot vacuum, also the agitation design of the extractor bar. Is it a uh, combination style with like bristles or silicone, or is it more of a dual extractor design, kind of like on the Roombas? But airflow is important in some cases, like carpet, but here's a look at the impeller, very cool design. Okay, so I was going to try to remove the extractor motor, but unfortunately, it's kind of molded down into the robot vacuum. There's no way to get at it. So I just left it as is. You can see my spaghetti mess. I'm going to have to try to figure out how to put everything back together. All right, have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you guys later.